so. All right, here's our second video to go through the um, urinary anatomy parts. We'll start off on the green kidney board with this large view of the kidney we can see right here. We can see the kidney capsule, the brown skin that we see on the outside. The kidney is then divided into the cortex, the region that you can see between my fingers here, the medulla, the region you can see between my fingers now, and ultimately the pelvis, the region that you can see between my fingers in there. Now if we look at some of the major structures we can see, within the medulla of the kidneys we have these large renal pyramids, these triangle shaped structures that are sort of a darker red color. Between the renal pyramids are the renal columns, these bits of tissue that pass between the pyramids. If we look in the pelvis region, we see these structures that look somewhat like trumpets. We have the minor calyces that meet the base of the, or the point of the pyramids, and the minor calyces fuse to form the major calyx, which ultimately fuses to form the ureter, leading out of the kidney and heading down towards the bladder. If we take a look at the blood vessels we can see on here, we can see the renal artery and vein, red for artery, blue for vein, no tricks on the kidney here. They lead to the interlobar arteries and veins, which pass between the pyramids and then to the arcuate arteries and veins that wrap around the top of the pyramids and ultimately to the interlobular arteries and veins which radiate out through the cortex of the kidney. Now if we look in here, we can see these little tiny white balls which are, are, are corpuscles. We can see the little corpuscles and the corpuscles are connected to the renal tubules, these little white tubes that we can see on here. What they've done on this model is this little section is now zoomed in and shown here. So now we can see the white balls blown up a lot larger. So here we have a glomerular capsule, which is the white ball we can see on the outside. And inside, on a cutaway view, we can now see the glomerulus, all of the little white, or the little blood vessels, sorry, the red blood vessels that we can see inside. If we look at the renal capsule, we see it leads to the renal tubules, which we can now see more detail of. Coming out of the capsule is the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule then leads to the loop of Henle, this descending part we can see coming down here, and ends up at the distal convoluted tubule. You will note the distal convoluted tubule is actually quite close geographically to the capsule, but it's distal because the urine has traveled a long way. The distal convoluted tubule ultimately dumps in to a collecting duct, and this collecting duct is leading through the pyramid and ultimately heading down towards the calyces. We can see blood vessels on here as well. We have the interlobar arteries and veins, because of this would be between a pyramid here. The arcuate arteries and veins wrapping around the top. And coming up here, we have the interlobular arteries and veins. We can also see the peritubular capillaries, these little small lines that are wrapped around the proximal and distal convoluted tubules up near the top of the structure here. Each one of these little white structures including all of the tubules and the corpuscle is collectively called a nephron and that functions as the actual filtering unit within the kidney. Now they've taken one of these and blown it up now so we can now see a cutaway view of one individual white ball. Here we can see our glomerular capsule, the white ball itself. If we look on the inside of the capsule, this is the parietal layer. We then have the capsular space or lumen in, in between the blood vessels and the white ball. And finally, the visceral layer is this sort of whitish, yellowy structure that we can see on top of the capillaries. The capillaries themselves are called the glomerulus, and this is where the actual filtration would be taking place. Now we can see coming off the glomerular capsule here, our proximal convoluted tubule. We can see leading into the glomerular capsule, the afferent arteriole, which we know because it has this structure on it here and the efferent arteriole, which is taking the blood out or away from the glomerular capsule, that blood that didn't get or taken out for filtration. We finally have the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The juxtaglomerular apparatus is two parts. It's first of all the juxtaglomerular cells that we can see here on the afferent arteriole, and it also includes the macula densa cells that we can see on the distal convoluted tubule.